Sometimes, well, every time, I get a chance to pick up a computer destined for the shredder, I will jump at the opportunity. This time, this has resulted in a most unhappy, but surprisingly clean Dell Dimension 8400. This quintessential mid-2000s plastic clad Dell tower may seem boring on the outside, but inside is quite a powerful combination of components for the time. Up front is the usual downward USB 2.0 ports and headphone jack, and in back is an abundance of I.O. that already makes this dimension look a little out of the ordinary. Inside, one of the first things that stood out to me is the side-mounted blower fan, which was equipped as standard for upper-end graphics cards. This was the first time I've seen it in person before, and it is very much needed in this case. For main specs, there is a 350 watt Dell power supply, a 3.4 GHz Pentium 4 550, 4 GB of DDR2, 256 MB NVIDIA 6800 XT PCIe graphics card, and no hard drive. Immediately a bulging capacitor can be seen, and where there's one, there's probably more. The beep codes that were being given on power on stated an issue with the RAM, so I tried reseeding every module first. This produced no results, so I started removing them, and with three modules in this configuration, the cooling fan stayed on high speed, and the display came up, but only with a forever blinking cursor. With only the first two slots populated, the Dell Post screen appeared and the setup could be accessed. That's enough for me to proceed, so on to the teardown. I did try other RAM configurations and known good modules, and it seems as though the two right slots are goners. This is not ideal, as dual channel mode will not be possible, but for reasons I cannot fully comprehend, I still want to save this thing. It is nice to at least work with such clean hardware. A closer look at the motherboard shows that indeed there are more bad capacitors, and even a slightly toasted 12 volt plug. Whatever caused that certainly could not have helped. This is the point where I pretty much committed to replacing the stock power supply. As shown, it still powers on everything, but I'd rather play it safe especially since I have a few extras laying around. Why not? After waiting a few days, the new caps arrived, and it was soldering time. I am very much an amateur at this, so the practice certainly doesn't hurt. And practice this board delivered. I had a lot of difficulty removing the VRM capacitors. Eventually, with enough flux and heat, they came out and the new ones went in. I suspect the issue came about due to lead-free solder, so allow me to say the following. I hate lead-free solder. I managed to singe the board a little around almost every VRM cap from the higher temps required, but luckily it's all only superficial. All the drama aside, everything up top came out great, so back to the mounting plate the board goes. Before everything can be reinstalled, I had to address an issue with the case that anyone who has worked on such Dell products before is familiar with. These designs intentionally block off space for universal ATX power supplies to be installed by means of simply not having a large enough of a cutout for rocker switches and plugs in slightly different locations. In bird culture, this is known as a Dremel move. I just freehanded it and compared the replacement to the cut a couple of times. With some final adjustments, sanding down the edges, and cleaning, this PSU upgrade is complete and everything else can be reinstalled. At this stage, a power on test of the motherboard alone and doing so outside would have probably been a good idea before putting everything in. However, I felt more than confident in the repairs and triple checked that none of the caps were installed backwards. In any case, I threw in a tester graphics card just to be safe. There shouldn't be any explosions going on here, right? Right?
Nah, nothing that eventful. With the UXW Bill smoke test being passed, I put the 6800 XT back in along with the rest of the hardware. For a hard drive, I went with a Seagate 320 GB 7200 RPM SATA drive. After that and a new CMOS battery, I set up everything needed in the BIOS. Not much longer after that, the functional DVD drives delivered a fresh install of Windows XP and I proceeded to load both drivers and games to see what this setup can still do. All right, everything so far was stable, so let the benchmarks roll. Performance is pretty average, I can't help but feel it is lacking for this hardware. There was clear electrical damage done to this system before, so I'm wondering if some lingering effects are at play here. Performance is definitely lower due to not being able to run the memory in dual channel, and unless anyone has any ideas on how to further diagnose the dead RAM slots, that's just how this thing will have to carry on. 3D Mark 06 produces abysmal results. 
And while this set of benchmarks came out after the 8400, it's still not looking like this very sluggish performance is quite right. The CPU testing was incredibly painful, and hyperthreading is enabled. I guess we will never know how much of a difference dual channel will make without buying a replacement board. Or, what about an over-the-top version of this whole tower? This is the fourth generation Dell XPS, and inside this beast of a tower is essentially the same hardware as the 8400. This one in particular even came with the same 6800 XT. How do they compare? Well, as much as such gripping cliffhangers are annoying, that will have to be for another video. And that's about it for this one. Thanks for watching.